Hello there everyone. When solving for thin lenses, one of the things that come up is what are the properties of the image that you're trying to solve for? Can we tell the property of the image from the value that we get and the sign of that value? And the answer is yes. We can actually use that all the time to figure out what property of the image, whether it was real or virtual, inverted or straight up, or bigger or smaller okay so to to figure out this let's just remind ourselves that we have this the equation 1 over f which is the the focal length of the lens is equal 1 over i which is the distance of the image from the lens plus 1 over o which is the o represents the distance of the object from the lens we also uh, may need to use this equation minus i over o is equal to m m is the magnification this is another equation but we're not going to use it here for the magnification this time okay i just want to remind you before i start we're going to trace we're going to use the trace the rays to find the property of the image first and then we're going to use the equations these two equations to find out if the ray tracing and the equations agree with each other and that will actually help us understand better what's going on okay and I would just want to remind you that each square that this is a square this is a square each square represents two centimeters so if we want to figure out the focal length for this um, convex lengths because that's what we're gonna use as an example we are going to say this is one two three four four squares each each square is two centimeters so that's the focal length always will be eight centimeters so that's what we're gonna use this is twice the focal length so this is 16 here's a case case number one I'm gonna call it and case number one we have an object as you can see and this object is uh, at square number 10 so if I count these squares are going to be 10 so this the object for this case O is at 20 centimeters away from the lens because we always measure with respect to the lens all right so now let's use first the ray tracing to find things out all right so as you can see I was able to draw three important rays that will help us trace where the image is so first one is going to be parallel to the principal axis and this one refracts into the focus on the other side another ray that goes through the intersection between the principal axis and the lens itself and this keeps going without any refraction or any change in direction straight and the third race that you can actually take it to the near focus for near near the object and it goes down once it hits the lens it goes parallel to the principal axis as you can see all of these have been intersected in one point if you draw this correctly and the top part meets here so you know that it is inverted already so this is the top part and you want to draw it like this there it is and you can tell that the image is smaller real because all the rays have met and it's inverted okay so now let's use these equations to solve for the image and see if we can actually get the exact same properties as we did in the past for the ray tracing so I'm gonna use the equation 1 over F is equal 1 over I plus 1 over O and F is equal to 8 centimeters as we agreed on and I that's what we need to, to find plus 1 over O the object is at 20 centimeters away if we solve that we get 1 over I is equal to 1 over 8 minus 1 over 20 and maybe we can find a common denominator I think 80 is the best common denominator so if you multiply this by 4 you get 80 here and if you multiply this by 10 you get 80 here so 10 minus 4 is 6 so that's 6 over 80 so I is equal to 80 over 6 centimeters and if I use a calculator I can find it to be equal to 13.3 
centimeters, 13.3 centimeters. Now notice 13.3 centimeters is a positive number. This positive number tells us that the image is real. So that's the first property we, we got. Now let's use the equation, this one, the magnification is equal to minus i over o, minus i, i is equal to 13.3, and minus comes down as it is, and the object is at 20, and if you solve this, you get 0.67, okay, you get 0.67 with a minus sign, all right? Now, this minus sign here tells us that the image is inverted, and since this number for the magnification as you can see, it's unitless. Since this number is less than one, the image should be smaller. So we got three different properties, real, inverted, and smaller. And that's what we have here. This image is inverted. It's real because all the rays have met. And it is also inverted, as you can see. All right. Now let's go to the second case. Okay. In this second case, as you can see, I'm going to do redo it again by ray tracing and by the equations. So by ray tracing, I'm going to drop a ray here parallel to the parallel, uh, to the principal axis. This will refract into the focus. Another one that goes through the intersection between the lens and the principal axis, that will go through without any change in direction. And the third one that goes through the near focus and that will refract once it hits the lens parallel to the principal axis. So I'm going to put these down. So after drawing all the rays, as I mentioned, you can see that all the rays meet here at the bottom. So the top part meets here at the bottom. And this will be our what? Our image. And if you can see, the image is almost equal in size to this object. And it's inverted and it's real because all the rays have met. Now let's use the equation. 1 over f equals 1 over i plus 1 over o. f is the same, which is 1 over 8. And the image, that's what we're looking for, plus 1 over the object. The object is at 16 centimeters away. Solving for the image, we can find that the image is also at 16 centimeters away, which is exactly where this should be. Okay. So, and it's positive, as you can see, the, so this means that the image is real. Now let's use the magnification equation. Magnification says is equal to minus i over o, and i, so I'm going to put the minus sign, i is at 16 centimeters, as you can see, and we found it here, and o is also at 16 centimeters, so that's minus 1. This minus tells us that it is inverted. And the 1 tells us that it's the same size, same size, because 1 is the same size, less than 1 is smaller, bigger than 1 is bigger. And this is, this is, these are the properties of the image. So we're done here. So the properties of the image was found here when the object is at a distance twice the focal length. If the object is at a distance twice the focal length, then the image will be inverted, same size, and it will be real if was done in a uh, convex lens. Okay, so now let's move on to the third case. And the third case is that when the object is between the focus and twice the focal length of the convex lens, okay? We are going to draw, again, three lines. One goes parallel, goes into the focus on the other side, one goes through the intersection between the lens and the principal axis, nothing happens to this one, and one goes through this part here, the focus nearby, and it goes down, then refracts into parallel into the uh, principal axis. And we're going to find out what properties of the image we can find here.
Okay, as we can see, this is this one is a bit more complicated. We trace the rays, and the rays meet somewhere here. And if we do that, the image will have a presence here. So the image, as you can see, is bigger, uh, real, and inverted. Now let's use the equations. We have the equation 1 over f equals 1 over i plus 1 over o. Okay, so using this equation, we know that the focus is 1, 2, 3, so it's 1 over 8, still the same as before, and then 1 over i plus 1 over the object. The object distance is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 2, that's 12, and then we can say 1 over i is equal to 1 over 8 minus 1 over 12, and 24 is the common denominator, so that's equal to 3 over 24, and this is 2 over 24. 3 minus 2 is 1 over 24. So i is equal to 24 centimeters, and that's that explains how far it is on the other side. So as you can see, it's positive, which means that this is real and if we use the magnification which is equal minus i over o we get minus 24 divided by the object distance which is 12 and if we do that we get minus 2 minus is for inverted and this 2 is bigger than 1 so the means what the the image is bigger than the object by by two times and that explains things here and now let's go to the third or the fourth option and the fourth option as you can see this is when the object is on exactly the focal length of the convex lens so if we trace that you can see you can see we cannot draw the third ray that goes through the focus because the object is on the focus or the focal length itself. Look here, the two rays that we were able to draw, they are sufficient enough to get the properties of the image. However, they are parallel, so they are parallel, they will never meet, and the image is expected to meet in the, in the, um, uh, in the infinity. However, so there is no image, so there is no properties of the image. So if we use the equation 1 over f is equal to 1 over i plus 1 over o, 1 over f, f is equal to 8 as we learn, and 1 over i, and the object is also 1 over 8. If we solve for that, 1 over i is equal to 1 over 8 minus 1 over 8 and that's 0 but that's 1 over i so i is equal to 1 over 0 and 1 over 0 is an unident unidentified uh, mathematical value so some people write it infinity some people just say it is an unidentified and there is a difference between the two but so no image so we can say here no image and that's it for this one and the final and most interesting case is when the object at a distance closer to the lens than its focal length. And if we want to do tracing, this is the ray tracing goes this one, and this one goes here, and let's do that and see what happens, okay? Again, we can't, we can draw the third one that goes through this way, but that will not help us identify the image. These two are sufficient enough, and as you can see, the rays ha are, as, as, as the distance here increases, they're going further apart from each other, so they will never meet. Since they will never meet, can we have their extensions meet? And the answer is yes. So if we extend those like this, and extend this one like that, and it seems to me that they are meeting somewhere here. And I'm going to put it like this. Okay? So the real rays do not meet, but their extensions on the other directions meet. And they form what we call a virtual image. And virtual image because they are, the image is actually 
virtual you cannot collect it on a screen or you cannot reflect it on a screen like in the movies or you cannot put it on the projector and the projector projects it on on the screen so that students can see a PowerPoint presentation or something like that for example a PowerPoint pr presentation that is on the screen that you can see it in front of you in the class that's a real image but this image is not real it's virtual so where do you see this you see this inside the lens as like when you see yourself in the mirror when you see yourself in the mirror you see yourself inside the mirror you cannot collect your image on a screen you cannot reach it basically and that's why we call it a virtual image now let's use the equations we have 1 over f equals 1 over i plus 1 over o 1 over 8 is equal to 1 over i plus 1 over o and o is at 4 centimeters and if we do that so 1 over i is equal to 1 over 8 minus 1 over 4 so this is 2 over 8 this is 1 over 8 1 minus 2 is minus 1 over 8 so i is equal to minus 8 centimeters this minus here means that the image is virtual okay now let's do the magnification magnification is equal to minus i over o and minus i so minus i is minus 8 and o is at 4 so this would be equals to minus times minus is plus so this would be 2 so this is plus 2 the plus means that it is uh, right side up and the 2 means it's bigger okay now we solve for the five cases in the lens no for the convex lens notice that for the convex lens we used always the focal length as positive 8 and that's important because for the concave you have to use if was if it was if this lens was concave then the focal length for it would be minus eight centimeters and you plug everything back here to the equation and the image you can follow the same results for the image value whether it's positive or negative then you can predict if it's going to be virtual or real or bigger or smaller or up or down and that's it for this one. Thank you very much for listening.